Yeah, um, obviously just going against their their front court again and uh, Barker and Ware. Uh, just what have you seen from you know A and M and over the the course of the season, and how do you feel like y'all have done against uh, bigger opponents so far? Well, we haven't done the scouting report on them to be in detail. We'll do that tomorrow. We're working on us right now, but I can answer generic questions on what I've observed. They are on, a, you know, they won their last two games. Um, I think Barker got in foul trouble here, so we never got to see her really get on, um, get going. Um, new coach, they're five and five in the league. Um, going on the roads always tough, and uh, I anticipate that. Um, um, it'll be a typical SEC game. They'll have a good crowd, and um, we'll have to battle hard. Uh, and, you know, they're going to play well, and hopefully we can match match how they play. And uh, just what has this week been like for you all, um, obviously, with another bye week? We had a couple days off um, and then been working on us. A lot of transition defense um, drills again. Communicating, talking, um, half court defense, can't get enough of that. Um, just what you would think you would do during a bye week if you're focusing on yourselves, you're, you're working on you in, in all phases of the game. Um, you, you almost today have to not scrimmage, but make it to where it's so intense that it's like a game and um, going against the dream team and each other. and. <gasps> Um, it's it's been good. The last bye week helped us tremendously. Yeah, the the bye week last week, if I remember correctly, it was a lot of like communicating and soul searching and kind of like let's figure it out kind of stuff. Is has this one been more basketball since then? Yeah, it's it's um, a lot of defense, a lot of defense again, um, and it'll be a lot of defense today with some control break stuff as well. Uh, we'll do some uh, things in the film room uh, before we go out there, but we won't do any A&M uh, scouting report or anything until tomorrow because we don't play until Monday. You talked previously about you know communicating to POA that you you want the POA that has been contributing to the team in the past, right? Like what have you, and now you seem to be getting that. I guess what do you like about this, and, and how can it still evolve? Well, I think confidence. I think she's playing with a lot of confidence. And um, the 11 press is what made me change the lineup. She is really good as the protector in the back of that press. And uh, when we pressed very little last year, I always wanted Poe in there instead of Alexis Morris. She just has great anticipation skills. And uh, she got to start the second half, and then she did some things really, really good defensively that kept her on the floor. And that is uh, Poa's game. And, uh, and when you're confident, <clears throat> you want to stay on that floor. And obviously, your play uh, dictates you stay on that floor. Hey, Kim, just wanted to, uh, Baylor's retiring Brittany Griner's jersey this mm -hmm. weekend. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I bet it'll be a great environment. Kim, with the. Uh, you may disagree, but it seemed like y'all defense really led to offense, especially the first half of the Vanderbilt game and the second half of the of the Alabama game. It was key. Do you, do you think, in, in your mind, is a light coming on for your team that they're seeing the benefits of? You know, obviously, they love to play offense and they're they're very good at it. But are they seeing the benefits of what the defense can do to help them? Well, the press you haven't seen much of in the three years I've been at LSU. Um, we went to that, not in desperation. We were down 10. We just needed to move. We just needed to have some activity. And the press makes you do that. Um, there have been games of late where I see progress on the defensive end. Um, and I just think that um, when we can do that, Scott, we are better. We're, we're a better team when we can do some good things defensively. And hopefully these days that we have to work on us this week, um, it'll register. I still think that transition defense um, can be better. Our half court defense really right now is better than our transition defense. 
And if we can just communicate and talk and help each other and, and get that area better, I, I think um, we'll be a better team. Coach, based on how Poa played um, last week, would you be open to maybe considering a change to the starting lineup? No, no. It doesn't matter who starts. Right. I've said that from day one. People get so caught up into starting. Starting means nothing in my world. I want to be in the top eight. And Poa is in the top eight. She's always been in the top eight, even when she's not playing um, the type of ball that she is now. Uh, you want to be in the rotation. And it's um, – you don't just go say, okay, now because you did this, go start and take Haley out. And, you know, that, what, what purpose does that serve? We've talked a little bit about dribble penetration and you know, tr trying to stop dribble penetration. How, do, how is she good at that? How does she help you all in that regard? Poa takes angles and puts herself in a position to take charges. Poa, um, she understands from being in the system two years now that it's not – False energy you have to give, it's smart energy. And she picks the ball up at half court when she's at the point and she channels them to a sideline. When her man gives up the ball, she positions herself where I'm going to be here, I've got your back, I'm going to help you right here if you get beat off dribble penetration. Dribble penetration, I don't care what level you're at, it's hard to guard people one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, the offense is always, you know, it's kind of like a pitcher. Who's going to win most of the battles, a pitcher or a, a batter? Um, when you got the ball in your hands and it's just one-on-one -on -one basketball, it's tough. You can't guard somebody at this level, at any level, one-on-one -on -one anymore. So that's where we have got to get better. We've got to trust each other. We've got to understand how to help a teammate. I always say this, five players need to guard the basketball at all times. And sometimes we don't do that. Coach, uh, you had a, you had an amazing third quarter. The other, the press was a big part of it. How much do you weigh depth and how many players you're playing and how much you want to actually press just so you have anything left in the tank at the end of a, of a game? Well, I may have stayed a possession or two too long in the press when we cut the lead and we got the deficit smaller. I actually – talk to them in the timeout, if I remember, and I make them take ownership. I said, y'all ready to get out of it now? You tired? No, no, we want to press the rest of the game. Um, and then that type of press, when you see them start breaking it and they get layups at the other end, which happens, then that's when you maybe make a decision. You've done what you needed to, the press to do, and that's to cut the lead, and then we took the lead. Um, and then we just got on a roll and just kept being very active and just stayed with it. Um, I think about the, the zone in the first half. Um, that may be the longest I've stayed in a zone since 2005 when we beat LSU. That may be the longest I've ever stayed in a zone, but it worked for four or five possessions. Coach, I was just thinking about the last two Alabama games, for example. They they seem to shoot well in the first half, and then you stopped them in the second half. Are you not getting off to maybe the starts you'd like or defensively? Uh, we have been. If you go prior to the Alabama game, I've liked our starts, and I think I've acknowledged that. Um, sometimes you just have to acknowledge the other team can get off to a good start too. And I think Alabama was just, as I said in the press conference before we played them, they were playing good, and they've been shooting it good. And that didn't surprise me. Uh, I know in February, sometimes you talk about that's enough, the month when people start getting a little tired. But it seems like you are getting longer breaks. Is, is that new between games? Is that helping? Or I just think it's the way the bye weeks work out. You never know when you're going to have your bye weeks. We don't know that until the schedules come out. Uh, but this is the grind month, the grind mentally, physically. Um, everybody's trying to win one or two more games to finish in the top of their conferences, go to conference tournaments. Um, and it's especially um, difficult for young players because most of them just finished high school and they're playing for state championships now. We're not even finished the conference. And so it's all new. It's all new. And um, 
That's why this bi week we have to make sure we get a, as much out of it as we can. Yeah, I guess in that same vein, and you kind of touched on it, you liking what you're seeing from Michaela as far as conditioning goes, and, and is Janae giving you kind of what you want with your rotation? I think Janae's minutes obviously have gone up as the season has progressed. Uh, she has great length and she has athleticism and um, she's being very aggressive when she goes in the game and I like that. Um, there was a point, to answer your question about Michaela, there was a point in the Alabama game, I think the second quarter, where I thought all of them looked bad. They all looked out of shape. And it was a timeout and I let them know that. I said, look at all of you huffing and puffing out here. And we hadn't even pressed at that point. So, um, it's just a grind right now. Some of them are mentally tired. Some of them, you know, probably physically tired because you think how hard you have to play. This has been going on since, what, October. And um, I just have to stay after it. Kim, the, the, the growth in chemistry between Angel and Anissa seems to be at a, you know, at a pinnacle at, as of this point. What have you liked about it most and do you think those two are playing at a level inside together to where, you know, you guys can really contend, you know, come March. I think uh, Morrow and, and Angel are two of the more athletic post players you're going to see in the country together. Um, we, we're, we may not be the biggest, but we're very athletic. And I think you saw um, Morrow recognize so many times in that Alabama game when her shot wasn't falling, she started dishing the ball off to Angel. I love seeing that. And you already know Angel will find you if you're open. She's one of the more unselfish players to try to give up a, her shot to get somebody else's shot. Um, I think Morrow and Angel are both up for some national awards defensively, as they should be. Um, Morrow, undersized post player, she has very good anticipation skills. She'll steal a ball on the perimeter when you think that pass is open. She very rarely gets buried down. She, she will work really hard to pull the chair out from under them and try to three-quarter or front them. Um, and then, of course, Angel with bigger size, she will um, probably sometimes have lapses at the top when people are screening guards and we need to do a better job of being a, a better teammate up there until our perimeter player can get through the screen, either the top of it or below it. Um, and that, that, that's just focus. That's just focus to do it every time. I've got a question about, you know, over your overall philosophy, I guess, how do you balance telling your team to crash the offensive glass with them also getting back in transition defense. How do you balance those two things? Well, they can't push it up the floor if you go to the offensive boards and score. They got to take it out of bounds, right? So you work on that. Because what happens, Reed, a lot of times when we're preparing to play a team that pushes in transition and they shoot a lot of threes, we stop going to the offensive boards. And so consequently, we'll stop in the middle of practice and we'll go, so only these two are going to go to the offensive boards because y'all worrying about transition defense. Well, you teach and you tell them if you go in there and you get that offensive board and you get a put back, they got to throw it out of bounds. You got plenty of time to get back. So it's just making them understand an offensive put back will prevent those quick passes up the floor and you don't have to worry about getting back so fast. Yeah, I'm, uh, going back to Angel, but maybe. Uh, you said she's been more unselfish passing the ball and stuff, and obviously her assist numbers up. But then, but then she can s still take over a game like she did Saturday, 27 and, and 19. How, how do you see that her game has progressed overall this year? And how, and how do you think she's handled even more? I saw she's on the cover of another magazine uh, this week. How, how do you think she's handled the, all the attention that's come from from last season to this? I don't know about a magazine. I, I don't keep up with all that. I can't imagine that what she experienced with all that last year is any greater this year than it was last year, and I thought she handled it beautifully. Um, Angel will do what Angel has to do. Uh, if it's score a lot of points, she's very willing to, to do that. If it's uh, get somebody else a shot and pass up a shot because she can and the game 
uh, allows her to, to do that, she'll do it. Um, her career is winding down in college. And so you start counting probably in her mind how many more games I have in my college career. And every game is maybe magnified more. I don't know. I'm just answering um, based upon my experience and what a lot of seniors say is that um, it's a sense of urgency for me now. Kind of in that same vein, uh, Flaget had a local Super Bowl, Super Bowl commercial with Gordon. Uh, that was a big deal to her. How is she handling kind of her rap career still? And, and it was new to us all last year, but now is it settled in? I, I guess I'll answer that the same way I did Angel. I, I guess they do great. All I know is I judge them based upon when they're on the floor and they same old Angels, same old Flaget. They're out here to, to try to do what they did last year. Um, and I didn't see that Super Bowl commercial. I actually got up to go to the bathroom and they were hollering, Flage, he's on it. Well, it was gone by the time I got back in the room. So um, I'm sure she's still doing the same stuff she's always done. Yeah, Coach, to, to get the road win over uh, Vanderbilt after losing the last two road games, do you feel better about where your team's at going on the road just mentally? Yeah, I, sure I do. Um, I think I'm right. We're second in the league right now. Is that right? We're not sharing it. We're second in the league. So you've got five games. You control your own destiny. Win five games, you finish second in the league. Uh, so you don't have to depend on other people to win or lose and all that stuff. You've put yourself in a position that if you can't be the champion, I guess the next best place to be is right below the champion in second place. Um, and so I feel good about going on the road. Um, some, some people play better on the road. Um, I like being at home with our fans, but um, I don't find that the road is necessarily an enemy. I think the road is tough, and you have to prepare like you're down 10 to nothing when the ball's tipped. Um, you're not sleeping in your own bed. It's a different environment, but what do we have? Two and three, three on the road and two here. See how many of these we can win. 